In this week's video, I'm going to tell you about how I became debt free on a low income by paying my help loan and other debts in 4.5 years. My name is Agatha from the Wealth Tribe and this is where we learn how to build wealth together. I was seated in a matatu one morning on my way to work on Gong Road when I received a call from when I received a call from a stranger. The person identified themselves as a debt collector. And so they asked me when I was planning to pay back their debt. I had a loan from one of the mobile money loans. I had many loans from the mobile money loans. And so he was specifically calling to ask me when I was going to pay back the loan from their specific company. I told him that I didn't have the money and so I couldn't pay that morning. He told me that he needed me to pay that, ma that money that morning, the money that morning or pay it within that week. I told him I didn't have the money. And so he told me that wasn't his problem. Uh, it wasn't his problem where I was going to get that money. All he was interested in is that I pay the money either that morning or within that week. He gave me a deadline. Um, I insisted that I did not have the money. So he told me, see, I know where you work. I know who you call often. I know where you live. I know the route you take on your way to work. I have access to all your messages. I have access to all your contacts. So if you do not pay this money, if you don't pay back this money by the end of this week, we're going to track you down. And I remember feeling, what? I remember experiencing a very, very sharp pain in my stomach. Um, I remember sweating, my, arm, my palms were sweating and I remember feeling very, very scared. I remember thinking, how had I gotten myself there? And why, why was I receiving a life-threatening call on a Monday morning on my way to work as opposed to receiving a normal call? That was mid-2018. And the question is, how did I get myself there? That's what we're going to be talking about this week. How had I gotten myself in this debt situation? By the time I was receiving that life threatening call in mid 2018, I had my help loan. I owed friends. I had multiple loans from their mobile money loans. And so how had I gotten myself to a point where I had all these loans? I started my first job in November 2016 and my gross salary was 50,000. And of course, as a young person, nobody tells you that there's a difference between your gross and your net salary. And so I remember in November 2016, uh, when I got my first job, I was very, very excited that I was being paid 50K. I actually remember calling a friend of mine and asking them, is 50K a lot of money? And he told me that, yeah, in this country, young people, new graduates are paid very little money. So you're very lucky to be earning 50,000. And then the reality hit you know, in, at the end of November, at the end of the month, when my net salary actually hit the account and it was around 38,000. And that's, that's when I, and I started wondering how come, so I went to the HR and asked them how is it possible that uh, this is 38,000 and though she, she explained to me the difference between gross and net salary. Anyway, uh, the first week of, of December, of the first week of December, I go to the Higher Education Loans Board because I understood, at least at that point, I understood that I needed to pay back my health loan. So I went to the offices, to help offices. I registered my employer with help and they started deducting me 3,000 shillings from my salary. And so obviously my net became even smaller. But between December 2016 and the whole of 2017 and half of 2018 up to the point where i received this life threatening call i was financially illiterate and so what happened because just like most of us i wasn't taught about good money management at home and i wasn't taught about money management in school just like most of us and so between that period of time i was the queen of financial illiteracy and i used to buy a lot of clothes i used to buy a lot of unnecessary stuff i used to buy a lot of clothes i used to buy a lot of shoes 
um i used to buy so many shoes that some of them by the time i was starting my journey um to declutter and go to financial freedom i saw them and i was like you mean i own this which happens to a lot of us um and so i used to buy a lot of clothes i used to buy a lot of shoes and and, and fun and that is how i got myself into debt i used to borrow from one mobile money app to pay the other you know borrowing peter to pay paul and i remember at one point um telling i remember at one point i was bragging to my aunt how my limit my loan limit on one of the mobile money loans had gotten up to twenty seven thousand. and i remember my aunt looking at me and thinking hmm, you must be lucky because her loan limit in the same app was only fifty thousand. so she was envying me for having such a high loan limit but that was my life it was a life living on the edge borrowing money from one mobile money loan to and, and paying the other borrowing from a friend to pay a mobile money loan i even remember at some point my friends and i came together and started a chama where we, we would contribute in 2017 still we would contribute at around 3000 shillings per month and for some reason they decided to pick me as their treasurer which was a terrible decision because you should always um pick a treasurer who goes you know record keeping and and how to be accountable with the money so they picked me to be their treasurer and what happened is that they would send me money and i would spend it they would send me money and i would use it to um and i would use it to pay my mobile money loans and it was a cycle a cycle a cycle for the whole of 2017 and up to mid 2018 when i received that life-threatening call and when i received that life-threatening call I remember I went home that day. First of all, that day was a terrible day at work because I was scared that maybe somebody is following me, that maybe somebody is watching me, that maybe somebody is going to follow me on my way home. But anyway, when I went home that day, I remember thinking, sitting on my bed in my small um, studio apartment, and I remember wondering, how was it possible that as a single lady with no kids um how was it possible that i was unable to sustain my lifestyle with my salary how is it possible that i had zero savings why was i living paycheck to paycheck and i also asked myself is this normal and finally i remember thinking had i failed at adulting Since I had registered my employer with HELB, and that time I had a permanent job, so between DEC 2016 and November 2018, I was being deducted 3,000 shillings every month from my paycheck that went to, uh, towards paying my HELB loan. But between December, so between December 2018 and April 2020, I was in between jobs. That time I didn't have a permanent job. Sometimes I had gigs, sometimes I had a short-term contract. And so within that period of time, I wasn't consistently paying my hair loan. Sometimes I would pay 100 shillings, sometimes I would pay 1,000 shillings, whichever amount of money I could afford. Um, so what happened is that uh, but between that period of time, even if I was not consistently paying my help, I was doing better with money because remember in november 2018 i had received a life threatening call and had done um, some self introspection so between that period of time um i did better with my money i remember i started budgeting even if i didn't know how to do how to create a good budget i remember what i used to do is that i used to have a spending plan so if i knew that this month i was going to make forty thousand, for example before that money hit my account i used to have a list of how i'm going to spend this money so write how much i was going to pay in rent how much i was going to do how much i was going to spend it with groceries my electricity bills and all other necessities i had a spending plan because within that period of time i had read so many blog posts oh my god i had read so many blog posts so many personal finance and investing blogs and what realization that i i had made i had made several realizations that one it wasn't a me problem me being stuck in debt was not a personal problem it wasn't it was a personal failure in a way but i wasn't fully to blame i wasn't taught at home how to be to do better with money i wasn't taught in school you know nobody teaches us these things so by reading all these blog posts i had gathered um i had made peace with the fact that i had failed but really 
I could do better and it wasn't a, a personal failure as such. And I had also realized that it wasn't just me. There are so many adults walking around out here who do not know how to how to create a budget, how to save for retirement. Almost every other adult out here is financially illiterate. So I realized, let me stop blaming myself, it's not just me. So I learned that. I also learned how to create a budget and that's how I started uh, coming up with a um, the spending plan i also started building an emergency fund i remember i remember walking into one of the major banks uh, i went to westlands and walking into one of the major banks and opened a kawaida savings account at this point i know better that your emergency fund should not be be stored in a kawaida savings account it's better to do it in a money market fund but at that point because i didn't know better i remember opening a kawaida an, a normal bank account and started saving my emergency fund um i also remember reading about retirement and reading about financial freedom so as much as i wasn't consistent as much as i wasn't consistent with paying my health loan i did all these things i educated myself i created a budget i opened an emergency fund and the most beautiful part i got myself out of the mobile money loan debt and i paid all my friends and even my charmer within that period of time i got debt free halfway debt free so i paid all those loans but then i still had my help loan which i tackled later since i had finished paying all my other loans my mobile money loans money i owed to friends i still had to tackle my help loan so this at this point it was in may 2020 uh, at this point i was living in dubai i had a good job and at this point i was also i had all, i had started documenting my financial freedom journey on my book on my blog the wealth tribe and I, a short story of how i started documenting my story on the wealth tribe so when i realized that it is not a me problem that being in debt is not an agatha problem that there are so many other adults who are even older than I am and who are not good with money, I decided, let me start documenting my story. Let me start documenting my financial freedom journey or my financial literacy journey so to see if there are other people out there who can benefit from this story. So I started writing the articles that I would share them with my friends and my friends would ask me, hey, yeah, I also didn't know this. How about you write to me about uh, financial freedom? How about you write to me about creating a budget? How about you write to us about savings? And that is how my blog came, be, came to being from January 2020. And so in May 2020, I went back to consistently paying my health loan. In fact, at that point, I could pay back as much as 10,000 Kian shillings per month. And, and that's what I did. And what enabled me, apart from the fact that I now had a permanent job, what now enabled me to, to pay that much towards my loan was that my blog had now grown and it had now started making me money and i had started making money in three ways one through ads so when you go to thewealthtribe.com you'll see a few ads when you're reading and so google adsense would pay me a few that it, it wasn't much but it would it, they would pay me a, um, a few shillings here and there for that i would also make money through affiliate marketing and affiliate marketing is where you sell other people's products or other people's services and through that i through that i would make extra money and number three um, I, I did financial coaching so one day somebody reached out to me and told me hey I've been reading your blog for a year and I'm looking for a financial coach would you like to coach me and that's how I started financial coaching and that is how I made extra money which I used to pay which I used to get myself out of debt and so this should is also a lesson in that if you're if you're stuck in debt and you have a nine to five job and you don't think that you have enough money from your nine to five job to get out of debt and you really want to get out of debt faster or to achieve debt freedom faster you can get a side hustle pick a side hustle that works for you and use all the extra money to go to go towards debt freedom how much in total did i pay to the higher education loans board uh, the principal opening balance as of 25th july 2016 when i finished uni was 220000 this is the total amount of money that i received from help throughout the four years of my studies 
the interest the interest opening balance as of 25th July 2016 was 20,573 as you can see uh, the government started charging me interest even before I graduated and I always wondered why until I went to the help website and on the help website they state that one of the loanee's obligations is to to start payment after a period of one year on completion of studies or within such a period as the board may decide to recall the loan whichever is earlier um and you know i wish they gave us a grace period of that one year to secure a job you know before they start charging, charging us interest but anyway so help law help um charges a four percent interest per year it's important to to note that help charges a four percent interest per year and so for me the total owed including the interest was two hundred and forty thousand five hundred and seventy three and ten cents due to the four percent interest and then also they have a one thousand per year ledger fees so there's the interest then there's the one thousand per year ledger fees so due to the four percent interest and the one thousand per year ledger fees I paid a total of 279,041 shillings in total. Um, of course, I could have paid 359 and 41 shillings, 359,041 shillings if they had charged me the 5,000 shillings per month penalty fees for not making payments between December 2018 and April 2020 as I told you guys because it's yeah because they usually charge a 5000 penalty per month if you do not make a payment so but what happened is that um they didn't charge me that penalty because i resumed paying my payments in april 2020 and it was in the middle of a pandemic so i called them i asked them to give me my statement and they told me that they wouldn't charge me the penalties because i resumed to pay during the pandemic what is it like to be debt free or how does it feel to be debt free that's a, a question i a, a lot of people ask me um it feels like you can accomplish anything you know um one goal that i have apart from i had a goal to be debt free but the other goal that i have is to get my monthly passive income to equal my monthly expenses and so i know that if i got myself to a point where I could attain that freedom then i know i can get myself to a point where i can actually achieve financial freedom and then um being debt free makes me financially less anxious i'm one of those people who sometimes suffers from crippling financial anxiety i worry a lot about my financial well-being um i i i worry about whether i will be able to accomplish all the financial goals that i have but Achieving financial, uh, I mean, achieving debt freedom made me know, uh, ma makes me less anxious, makes me, you know, knowing that I don't owe anyone any money makes me sleep better at night. Remember that the beginning of this story was a life threatening call. I no longer have to stay awake at night thinking that somebody is going to call me demanding for their money. So I have less anxiety which is a beautiful thing for me which is where i really want to be with my financial freedom journey and then being financially free um you're you're able to accomplish your financial goals faster why you don't have a big chunk of money that is going towards financial institutions in form of interest so by that it means that all this money that was going towards paying them interest is going towards um building your net worth and that is another advantage of being financially free so if you're one of those people who is who's usually in the habit of updating your net worth sheet every month when you're debt free then you actually see that your net worth is growing faster and what is your net worth uh, your net worth is basically your assets things that have value minus your liabilities things that you owe such as debt so when you're debt free you know you're no longer paying anyone debt so all your money goes towards um growing or building your net worth and finally when getting to debt freedom feels especially when you're employed feels like you've gotten a raise you know because all the money that was going towards paying your debt is now going is now going towards you and your share hair or you and your and funding your financial freedom goals and being debt free of course reduces the risk of financial failure i mean 
we've had enough stories of Shylocks coming to people's houses and you know getting everything from their houses or from their offices and that scaffold is usually a very embarrassing situation and so being debt free reduces that risk you know it reduces the risk of you being in a situation where somebody can come and get all your assets and go them away and so i do think that it was a good decision for me to pursue debt freedom and it would be a good decision for you to pursue debt freedom what should you do after paying all your debt or after attaining financial f or after attaining debt freedom number one have a plan what are you going to do with the money you are using to pay off debt going forward so if you are paying 10,000 shillings per month towards your debt after you attain debt freedom have a plan before you even attain debt freedom have a plan of how you're going to be using that money um going forward because i've seen many people whom after attaining that, that freedom they find themselves back in debt because they use now that extra 10,000 shillings to to upgrade their lifestyles and upgrading your lifestyle uh, most of the time comes with debt so have a plan have a very clear plan of how you're going to use that money and the reason i say this is because i am very aware that you know we live in a world that easily sucks us back into debt you know we live in a world where you want to keep up with somebody or we live in a world where even the systems that we exist in for example um are not good enough for us to be financially independent they do not support financial freedom you i mean we've seen all the number of harambees that goes on in our whatsapp groups and all that so none of us including i despite attaining debt freedom is immune to going back into debt None of us is immune, so come up with a plan. I'm trying as much as possible, please do the same. And number two, decide what is your relationship with debt going forward. Because at the end of the day, debt is a tool that you can use to achieve financial freedom. Or debt is a tool that you can use to fund your goals. Um, there's good debt and there's bad debt. So you can go, you can take a debt, you can take a debt and use it to start a business, for example. You can take a debt um, to start an investment, one that of course has a higher, um, has a higher interest than the, the loan that you took. So debt is a tool that you can use to fund your goals. So be very clear with what is your relationship going forward. What is the relationship with debt going forward? And another question I often ask, I often get asked is, should the government do away with health loans and my answer is yes kenyans pay taxes and for me those taxes should be used to educate our children and as one of my favorite writers says her name is dr wandia Joya, the government owes our children quality education and not the other way around our children should not have to go through what I went through to get myself out of debt and what you are going through and what many other Kenyans are going through to get rid of student loans. Our government owes all our children quality education. Being debt free doesn't make you wealthy. I am not. In fact, I still ask every day, God, when? But I do hope that by listening to this story, you've learned that being debt-free is not something reserved for the rich.